the 2023 FIM Supermoto World Championship reaches a critical stage, we return to Alcaraz for the GP of Catalonia. Alcaraz is a small municipality in the Segria region of Catalonia and is one of the most undisturbed and tranquil areas in Iberia. It hosts the Alcaraz Floret event every March, a great opportunity to take in the gorgeous peach trees and breathtaking scenery. Filmmaker Carla Simon has recently shone a new spotlight on Alcaraz with her award-winning picture of the same name, but this weekend all eyes are on the racetrack and S1 GP. Alcaraz is one of the most spectacular circuits out there, and it even brings some past icons out to play this weekend in a special legend support race. Uh, the, the, the track is very nice. I think it is uh, one of the best uh, for the World Championship. I've been riding here uh, two years ago, but without the off-road. And uh, yeah, the, the track is honestly is perfect track for the, for the off-road. The, the off-road part is very nice, very fast. So a bit long for a whole guy like me, but yeah, the, the track honestly is uh, very funny to ride. I, I, I enjoy a lot. I don't think a, a, a big difference between the bike I used before and the, the, the one now. For sure, I'm really impressed about the power on the on the engine. For, for me, even it was the first time I used the Bezeler tire, so it was a, a bit uh, a stress for me. But honestly, bike are nearly similar. This track is first time for me, and uh, I have to say that it's, it's really, really nice. The off-road section is uh, incredible, but for me, because there's too many times now I didn't ride, it's really tireful, so really difficult for my arm. But I still enjoy it. It's actually my first time riding the TM, and I have to say it's a really, really nice bike. Uh, of course, there is many, many differences in between the Aprilia factory I was riding and this one. But I have to say on the off-road section, it's a lot easier this one right now. Aprilia is uh, still a bit faster on the straight line, but overall, I think this one is more efficient. Seems that um, I didn't forget everything, so hopefully I will continue on my, on my pace and uh, I try to do good, so I enjoy it. It's a wonderful circuit here in Alcaraz, with a dirt section that resembles a roller coaster ride and plenty of overtaking spots on the tarmac too. We expect lots of excitement around this layout of just over 1.5 kilometers. We've heard from the legends, now let's get some tips on the Alcaraz circuit from two upcoming stars, Bronson Pierce and Germain Vansnot. So welcome in the sky section. So this type of asphalt section is very special because this time we have a corner like this and you can, you can keep a lot of speed on this kind of corner. After that, we have a small jump, then it gives you less, less, less speed and you need to, in, you need to enter inside to be, to be right and do this table. After this table, we have a second one over, over there and just before to go down in the dirt section. So this type of sky section is very special because no, it's not all the country who allowed it. So in Spain it's allowed, for example, but in my country, in France, it's not possible. Once you land off of this second tabletop here, you want to carry as much momentum as you can coming into this right-hander where we have a big drop-off into the off-road section here in Alcaraz. Um, by carrying as much momentum as you can, you're able to carry as much speed into that left-hander as possible, which allows you to carry more momentum through that turn, which gives you a better setup through the entire off-road. The dirt section here is revered among the riders, and for 2023, it has been expanded and enhanced. We now have more technical corners, but none of the high-speed flowing sections have been lost. A very exciting prospect. Let's take a closer look with our track guides. Off the line here in Alcaraz. Of course, the first thing you do is drop down into the dirt through this right-hander. Amazing dirt section here through the left-hander. 
as Bronson Pierce alluded to, you've really got to carry the momentum through this high speed section of jumps. Cannot afford to be scrubbing too much speed. Last year at this point, it was a hairpin, a left-hander. We now, though, do a 180 degree right into a 180 degree left around that lovely old farm building. We've extended the dirt section this year, some more overtaking opportunities potentially through the back. Charging back towards the tarmac then, high speed jumps once again. Gonna nail your landings and then you're gonna take a brave pill. It feels like you're launching into space as you rejoin the tarmac at the end of that spectacular dirt section. As you can see, some tight corners interspersed here in the tarmac section. I'm sure we're gonna see lots of overtaking here. We do, however, build up speed. This is a long, long, long right-hander into this braking zone. Another good overtaking opportunity here, especially for those that like to use that rear brake to slide. Nice and technical through this middle section of the lap. You're building here to the long back straight where you can really get some speed up, some kilometers an hour, some miles per hour. Here it is now, firing under the Alpina bridge. And this section has been slightly reconfigured. It was a double apex last year. This year it's a hairpin, tighter corner, better overtaking opportunity as well. One last sky section to complete the lap over this little jump. And that's where the checkered flag will be to conclude a lap here at Alcaraz. Race one of the weekend, and it's the Super Bowl win for Lucas Hurlbacker. He's on pole with Schmidt and Local Avia on the front row with him. Steve Bonnell, Thomas Charret, and Alexis Poirot on row two. Vance Knott, Sam Martin, and Bushberger on row three. Row four, Tim Zalai, Roman Kivers, and Milan Sitniansky. Lights out, we're underway for the first time this weekend and it looks to be an ace start as always from Lucas Hullbacker. He leads, no dirt on the first lap, just the tarmac part of the course on this opening lap. Steve Bonnell briefly in third place there, but Thomas Charret gets through. So Bonnell down to fourth place. It's Mark Reiner Schmidt behind Hullbacker at the front of the order. Lucas Hullbacker, look at how sideways he's going there. Believe it or not, that man was injured in August. Uh, a thumb injury, I think a slight injury to the wrist as well. Was off the bike for several weeks, but you wouldn't expect it. Looking at what he's doing in the early stages. Hopefully his fitness is up to par. I'm sure he'll have been working hard, even if he wasn't allowed on the bike. He needs to get a good result here in Spain, does Lucas Hurlbacker. World's fastest baker. Closest contender to Mark Reiner Schmidt in the championship, I believe 27 points between them, with the uh, Super Pole points awarded to Lucas Hurlbacker. He can definitely do with the win here. Steve Bonnell running in fourth place. Oh, rider down there on the right of screen. That was Thomas Charret. Thomas Charret has dropped the bike. I understand he's gone back underway, but he's a long way down. There goes Julian Avia. One of the front runners in the Spanish Supermoto Championship getting past Steve Bonnell for third place. Be very familiar with this Alcaraz layout. Putting in a good shift here as a wild card in the early going. But Lucas Hullbacker maintaining that advantage, extending that advantage even over Mark Reiner Schmidt. And outside the top 10, Thomas Charret. He's got a lot of work to do to score some good points in this first race. Back onto the dirt goes Lucas Hurlbacker. He does love the dirt. He also competes in motocross occasionally in addition to his supermoto commitments. The arch ambassador really for KTM. If you see a KTM doing spectacular slides on social media or indeed on television, it's more than likely Lucas Hurlbacker at the controls. Mark Reiner Schmidt threading his way through the dirt. Love the extension to the dirt section this year. Fighting hard to keep that number one plate. There's Reimer, Nicky Reimer on the 141. One of the PMA team riders, Bronson Pierce, the other half of that squad. He recently scored his first AMA Supermoto win back in the US. Victory on home turf, something that Julian Avia is well used to. 
Definitely one of the front runners in the Spanish series. Steve Bonnell. TC4R1 machine stalking the number 51 of Julian Avia Cortez. I think Avia may have gotten the better of the number three rider. Up and over the jump goes Mark Reiner Schmidt. Just a couple of laps left to go. I think he's going to have to settle for second on this occasion, but with the better part of 30 points between himself and Hurlbacker, he can afford to finish P2 here. He can afford to take the conservative approach for the remainder of this season. Thomas Charrere on the number four has managed to get himself all the way back up into fourth place. Avia is the next target, but I'm not sure he's going to get there. We'll have to see. But Charrere's done very well to get all the way back up into P4. Considering he was uh, down outside the top dozen, I believe, after his uh, off. Lucas Hellbacker, though, drama free. A cut above at race one, at least, in Alcaraz. Almost look like, looks like he's uh, rented the track out for himself. Hellbacker. Heading for a full haul of points in race one, and the early advantage waits for him in the Grand Prix of Catalonia. The MTR KTM team firmly still in this title hunt along with the TM Factory squad and Mark Reiner Schmidt. But it's Lucas Hullbacker that sees the flag first. Excellent riding. First race Saturday evening, perfect start, finish, victory, uh, nothing. Uh, stress for me, I mean, I push a lot. Uh, Mark and all the other guys, the Spanish rider, the young, uh, is super fast. Thomas had a mistake, so we struggle all and we show some mistakes, but in the end, I uh, had the focus and I had some good laps and I make the gap uh, open to the second position. Then uh, the last lap, I was a little bit going down with the lap times. I'm super happy about the bike now, about after my injury, I'm back, uh, super happy, six weeks no riding and I can be super, super, super happy and thank you so much to all the supporters, to the team and KTM and all the guys. Thanks guys. So a change in the standings because Thomas Charrere inherits third place. Julian Avia Cortez's machine judged to be too loud over the decibel limit. He's dropped down to ninth in that first race. Sunday morning here in Alcaraz and a little chance for the riders to cool down in the Catalan heat ahead of the fast race. Bottles, hopefully on ice, await the winners at the end of the day. Can race one and Super Bowl winner Lucas Hulbacher continue his good form in the two remaining races? And they're underway in the fast race. Lucas Holbacker with another good start. Whole shot, Holbacker does it again. Everybody just trying to find their space through that first hairpin, which is exclusive, of course, to the first lap. Just nine laps in the fast race, and already Holbacker seems to have quite the advantage. Saying that, Schmidt isn't too far away, is he? Holbacker down through the dirt for the first time. Steve Bonnell in a fourth position. Keeping a watching brief on Thomas Charret, who is his team boss. He is the TC in TC4R1. Lucas Hellbacker makes his way around that cone. Hellbacker, really impressive yesterday. He's looking to try and get uh, another win on the board here. That will make the super final a much less high pressure situation for the Austrian on the MTR KTM if he can claim the win in this fast race. Steve Bonnell still running behind the top three. Really interesting to see the lines through those 180s, especially the first of them. You can see how they're squaring off the corners. Real edge of your seat dirt section here, round the big tree. 
Back towards the tarmac goes Bonnell. Have to be very, very brave here at Alcaraz to be quick. So we've got a slow rider there, but well clear of the racing line as Lucas Hulbacher goes through. Goodness me. Always spectacular to watch Lucas over the bumps, or a little bit scary depending on your disposition. Mark Reiner-Schmidt still following in second place. The 30 Racing TM Factory number one, the red plate, the championship leader, the defending champion, of course. Mark Reiner-Schmidt looking to write his own chapters in Supermoto history, which he's done for the last couple of years. Since moving over to the TM, he has been incredibly impressive. Lap six of the race, and Lucas Hull back at once again just doing everything right here. The world's fastest Baker came in potentially on the back foot this weekend with the injury during the off season, and also with points disadvantage compared to Mark Reiner-Schmidt. However, Alcaraz is a circuit that he really enjoys. Alejandro Rodriguez, another of Spanish locals there. Just saw Giovanni Basai there in that pack further back, the ex-World Superbike racer on the 200 machine. Always good to see him out there. Mark Reiner-Schmidt crossing the line to begin the final lap and I'm not sure he's going to get a look in here. It's going to be another conservative ride to second place. I said he could afford it in race one and I was right. He can also afford it in race two but every time he finishes behind Hurlbacker that points advantage disappears. Steve Bonnell looks like he's going to an easy fourth place here behind his mentor Thomas Charret. And sure enough, the chequered flag once again awaits Lucas Hullbacker. Hullbacker then at the top of that race. Charret in third behind Schmidt. Bonnell, Avia up to fifth place. San Martin in sixth, just ahead of Germain Vansnot. Uh, the difficult race uh, at the beginning uh, was... Uh I struggle a little bit. I, uh, I don't have the, the, the rhythm of uh, Lucas and Mark. And after uh, five, six laps, uh, I was okay and uh, I pushed, but uh, it was too late, so I tried to the super final. So Hullbacker with a seven point advantage going into the super final. He will want to win this Grand Prix of Catalonia and further shrink the gap between himself and Mark Reiner Schmidt in the championship. Char Rare with an outside shot too. Super final time and it will be Lucas Holbacker once again from pole position. Schmidt and Char Rare with him on the front row. Row two, Steve Bommel, Julian Avia and Elias Samartin. Row three, Vantzno, Buschberger and Juaro. And your fourth row of the grid, Milan Sitniansky, Alejandro Rodriguez Mesa and Roman Kivers. Lights out for the final time this weekend, and once again, it looks as though Hullbacker leads. Yes, he does. Another good start from Hullbacker. A good start as well from Char Rare, who moves into second place. Steve Bonnell demoted to fifth in the early going. That's Avia who's gotten past him into fourth place. Avia continuing to showcase his stuff on his wildcard appearance here at the Grand Prix of Catalonia. Hullbacker leading the way. In the early stages, Mark Reiner-Schmidt will want to get past Charret quickly. Charret also an outside shot, just uh, a few points back from Schmidt in terms of the Grand Prix of Catalonia. And Mark Reiner-Schmidt, oh, he's gone for it, and oh, he almost collects the rear of the MTR KTM there. But he manages to get himself up into second place. That was committed breaking into that hairpin. And Mark Reiner-Schmidt gets himself into second. Char Rare remains in third place. He's got a Via just behind him in fourth. Steve Bonnell in fifth position, just behind a Via, of course. The TC4R1 machine giving chase. Bonnell seemingly closer 
almost every weekend to the pace of the leading trio in the FIM World Supermoto Championship. How long before he's challenging for championships and wins? Tim Zalai there, getting a nice move up the inside onto the dirt. Hurlbacker not having to make any moves right now. He's just having to keep it planted, keep it clean. And he's doing that admirably at the moment. Mark Reiner-Schmidt trying to give chase. Lap three of the race, lap four of the race. And Hurlbacker still not really being given any respite here. Mark Reiner-Schmidt can clearly match Lucas Hurlbacker. He's just struggling to surpass Lucas Hullbacker. It's that extra couple of tenths that he needs to find to close in on the Austrian. All so evenly matched at the sharp end of the World Championship, though. And Hullbacker seems to rate this place as his happy hunting ground. Spoke to... Hullbacker before Alcaraz last year and he said yeah I love this place Schmidt is being shadowed here by Charret he's under a lot of pressure actually and as he defends from Charret Hullbacker's getting away on the brakes he's leaving the door open there it looks like he's struggling to get the bike slowed down actually and Thomas Charret Gets himself up into second place. Mark Reiner Schmidt losing out to Thomas Charret, and that's big for the championship. That means that Holbacker will take even more points out of Mark Reiner Schmidt. Charret in a comfortable second place then. Nice sideways riding from Charret, but look at Schmidt. I think he's got an issue with the suspension. That thing riding extremely low. Clearly not adjusting as intended. And Thomas Charret is up into the lead. Lucas Hallbacker must have made an error because Thomas Charret is now your race leader. Hallbacker will still take the Grand Prix of Catalonia. Andreas Buschberger getting past Mark Reiner Schmidt. Schmidt clearly with a wounded motorcycle. Buschberger looking over the shoulder as if to say, did I see that right? And did we see this right? Ulbacher back to the fore. Well, Thomas Charret was leading. I think Ulbacher must have made an error somewhere. But he gets back to the front. Lucas Ulbacher on the final lap is not only going to take the Grand Prix of Catalonia if he can hold off Thomas Charret will take a huge chunk out of the championship advantage and <laughs> you can hear the excitement of Lucas Hullbacker he's just brought himself right back into the championship hunt he was the closest rival to Mark Reiner Schmidt and with a ninth place finish for Schmidt Hullbacker will be right with him in the championship Charret and Cortez rounding out your top three in that race Lucas Hullbacker takes the Grand Prix of Catalonia. Thomas Charret gets second place because of Mark Reiner Schmidt's issues in the final. Steve Bonnell and Julian Avia Cortez, your top five. Well, there's Mark Reiner Schmidt cutting a dejected figure. That suspension just stopped decompressing seemingly. He takes a third step of the podium. Thomas Charret taking the second step. But the Grand Prix of Catalonia will go to Lucas Hullbacker, who takes a huge chunk out of Mark Reiner Schmidt's championship lead. However, Schmidt will still have the red plate. Gerard Companies, the mayor of Alcaraz, presents the winner's trophy to Lucas Hullbacker. Ignacio Veneda, the FIM vice president, handing the red plate to Mark Reiner Schmidt. He's happy that he's still the championship leader, at least. But it could have been a bigger lead coming out of this event without that issue in the Super Final. Perfect weekend from the first practice till the last race. I was on first position. Um, the speed was super intense. Um, I felt really good on the bike and uh, we had a great track. Uh, it was a lot of fun to ride here because of these nice track conditions. Um, yeah, in the overall standings now with my overall victory here, I'm more close to the lead, to Mark, and uh, we have one more round in Mete in Belgium in uh, three weeks, so I keep the focus and um, be ready for the fight of the title. I want to be there, I want to be 
fight for them and uh, thank you so much to the team, to all the sponsors and uh, to all the guys who are standing behind me. It's a big pleasure and we keep working and see you next time. And here are the points. The perfect weekend for Lucas Hulbacher brings it to just three points between himself and Mark Reiner-Schmidt heading into the season finale with Charest still in mathematical contention as well. The hallowed ground of Mete will be the location for the final duel of 2023 where a champion will be crowned.